I recall hearing the voice tell me, you're going to stab him today. He's going to hit you. And you're going to stab him. I remember being told which two knives to get out of my kitchen and where to strategically place the knives in the couch so that I can grab them when he struck me. I vaguely remember seeing the whole thing happen. Harold, which was, is my blind stepfather, was laying over in his side of the room. Brian and I were sitting on the couch. He came back home from, um, he was out doing his coke. He had him a little job, a little FEMA cleanup job, and I was off work because I had to get knee surgery. And I had to pay bills. I had to use his money to pay bills. And when he got there, he accused me of taking more money than what was expected. And you know, me having my smart ass mouth, it was, nigga, I dare you say anything about me paying bills. If I didn't pay the bills, you would have more money to put up your nose. Paying these bills is the least you can do. You're already out here fucking around cheating. So, he struck me. And I told him once before, if you ever put your hands on me again, I'll kill you. And I meant that. So when he struck me, I grabbed the knife and I... Jugged him in his chest. Actually, it was the side of his. I'm turning my body around. It was on his left side. A little bit up under his rib cage. I hit him one time with the knife. And I got up and I ran out the house. As I was running out the house. He was falling on the floor and he grabbed my gun out of his pocket and shot at me. The bullet lodged in the wall. I ran out the house and as I'm running on the side of the house, he's coming out also. And right before I reached the back, the entrance to my backyard, the voice says, stop. I stopped dead in my tracks and I turned around and I told him, if you're going to kill me, you're going to look me dead in my face. You won't shoot me in my back like the coward that you are. You're going to look me dead in my eyes and take my life. And he looked at me. And he turned around holding his little wound and got in his truck. I called the police. The police came. I told them what happened. And, um... They really wasn't sure what the outcome was going to be. I was I was scared. I was crying because I did not want to go to prison for defending myself. But I had stabbed someone and it was possible that he could die. They found him because he went over to a papa spot in the neighborhood where he was at. And they took him back to the emergency room. They took him to the emergency room. The police officer called me and said, this man must really love you because he told us as we brought him in that if he does pass away, this was a case of self-defense. He struck you first and he struck you before. So you were only defending yourself. They had him in surgery for a while, and what I left him branded with, a reminder, the cut that I gave him was very small, but
But when they opened them up to make sure that there was no internal bleeding, they cut him from his breastbone to his navel. While I was defending myself, and I was listening to the direction of the voice that I always hear. And when she spoke, she was very, like my voice sound now, very relaxed, very calm, very peaceful. I was following direction, but that actually freaked my human out. It freaked my human completely out to know that I could have taken another human's life. I recognized that my soul didn't give a damn about taking his life because she'd already spoken up once before that if you ever do that again, I will take you out this realm. But my human, it really, really fucked me up. And I would say that that tragic moment is when Maybe my the beginning of my dark night of the soul happened. As I understand now and based on my personal experiences and what I've read, the dark night of the soul begins when something tragic 